So let me start today's video by asking you whether you have heard such statements before. Please write out your answer in the comments. So have you heard before that people say that hey, if you have invested 500 rupees in Infosys back in 2000s, then it would have become 50,000 rupees now. Similarly, if you would have invested $2 in Google back in the 90s, then it would have become $2 million now. Now, if I collect five, six such sentences and try to portray the value of long-term investing, you will be super impressed and you will make all your trades from a long-term perspective. But guess what? In long term, all of us are dead, right? So the bottom line is that you invest in the stock market to make money and enjoy that money too, right? That's one. Now I'm not saying, and this is a disclaimer, that I'm not saying that long term investing is bad. Long term investing is very, very important. I myself do long term investing, but there is a proper way and proper channel of doing this long term investing. So on this video, I'm going to explain how I am going to make a fresh investment. So we are sitting in end of July. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to invest 50 lakh rupees in the stock market right now. Now, how did I make 50 lakh rupees? That's a topic for different discussion altogether. But on this video, we are going to take a look at the ins and outs and a proper way of doing long term investing. So let's get this video started and I have curated this video for beginners and intermediate level users. So please watch this video till the very end. I am going to explain in very simple five point concept how you need to think about long term investing. Please watch the video till the very end because if you watch this entire video in half a fashion and don't take notes, you will make bad investments. So let me take you through five specific points that you need to understand about long term investing. Point number one, there are three ways in which you can do long term investing. So what are these ways? A, you can invest in individual stocks, right? Individual stocks. Right? B, you can invest in baskets. This could be small case, right? Small case or mutual funds. And third is index funds. Now, many of you would say that, hey, Akshat, index funds are somewhat mutual funds only. So why are you separating it? Because the investment strategy and investment style in terms of long term investing will differ dramatically from mutual fund vis a vis index fund, which I will explain. So this is point number one. Point number two, what you need to understand is that investing in individual stocks is very risky, right? This is super, super important for you to understand. Now, before I explain this point further, let me quickly tell you the difference between long term investing versus swing trading, right? Swing trading. So swing trading essentially means, so swing trading is a little bit easier to understand. So let us first decipher this. So swing trading basically means that let's say that if I go and buy any stock, so let's say that if I go and buy HUL and if I've invested, let's say five lakh rupees in it, right? Then I wait for a little bit of time period. It can be like 15 days. It can be four months. It can be five months. It can be one year also, right? Or it can be three years also, right? The intent with which I bought this stock is I will make a certain amount of profit on it. It could be like 10%, 15%, whatever, right? Then I'm going to get out in this time period, right? Then I'm going to come back in and buy maybe other stock or reinvest in this stock at a slightly later stage. So this is called as swing trading. So because what you're doing is that you're just holding the stock for a little while, you're making profits on it, you're selling it off, and then you're reinvesting that money in some other stocks. So this is called as swing trading. So I hope this explanation is clear. Now, what is long term investing? So long term investing means that, hey, if I have picked like HUL stock, I have literally invested in that company, right? And honestly, I don't need that money for a long period of time, right? So I am okay investing in it. I would probably have a different trading account or investing account. I may call it either way, right? And I have put this stock in that trading or investing account for a long term, right? Long term generally means it does not mean forever. It usually means that this is a 10 to 20 year or one to two decade horizon on it and sometimes even longer. Now, basically many investors, for example, Mr. Rakesh Junjunwala, right? Who is one of the ace investors in India. He has both a trading account where he does intraday swing trade, whatnot. And he has a long term investing account, right? So I too have a separate trading account where I do swing trades, intraday trades, whenever I get an opportunity. And then I have a separate long term trading account. I don't have too many shares, but the shares that I buy, those are very well picked 
at the right time. I keep adding on it. I'll explain you the strategy also. But bottom line, what I'm trying to tell you is that I have a separate trading account. I check the market very frequently to trade in those stocks. And then long term investment account, I don't check it. So I rarely check the performance of that long term trading account because I have invested that money for 10 years. So if the market goes up, fine. If the market goes down, fine. I anyways don't need that money for the next 20 years. So this is how you need to maintain your account that you must have a trading account if you are into trading or if you are only in long term investing, then just have a long term investing account. Don't do the both from the same account, right? So I hope this helps you understand the difference between long term investing and swing trading. Now, part B that you need to understand is that long term investing in individual stocks, right? In individual stocks, it's very, very risky. So let me explain this point by giving you the examples of Reliance Communication. I have used this example before, but this is a fascinating story because we often hear things like that. Hey, you know what? Google went from like two dollars to so now it's two million dollars, whatever. And Infosys went from like fifty rupees or hundred rupees to fifteen thousand rupees now. Yes, those things are true. Those companies survived. That is called as survivorship bias, right? If you are investing and holding a company for twenty years or thirty years. A lot of things can go wrong in that business, right? So let me help you understand this point by taking the example of Reliance Communication. We are talking about a massive company, Reliance Group. Reliance is usually ranked number one or number two company in India. So it's not a small company. And look at what happened with Reliance Com. At one point in time, it was trading at approximately like 800 ish levels, right? At its peak. Now it's trading at three rupees, right? And it's not as if that the share price did not do well. It got listed at approximately like 300 levels. It went up to 3x, right? Within a very short span of time. And then it has constantly fallen. So it has constantly fallen. Investors rarely got an opportunity to get out of it, right? So there were a lot of issues. These kind of stories are not one off stories. I can show you at least 10 shares of good companies that have literally gone bankrupt. So the assumption that, hey, pick a good company, forget about it. It does not work. It only works in certain scenarios, certain cases when you are an excellent investor. So please don't believe in the myth that long term investing is easy. Long term investing is one of the most complex things to do in individual stocks. Now you might say that yeah, Akshat, you know what? This is very scary. Do you not invest your own money for long term? I do and I'll explain you how I make those investments and what type of stocks I invest in. Now, essentially, when I'm looking to invest in individual stocks for the long term, I look for stable companies. Right, stable firms. An example here would be something like Hindustan Unilever. Now, this is the lifetime chart of Hindustan Unilever, and you can see that you know it has generally grown, right? And it has grown at a decent pace and a somewhat stable pace. Now, there will be a lot of shares where you will see that the chart pattern. Now, here it was like this, right? I mean, it went like this and it went up, right? So this is somewhat stable. Many a times, what happens is that the stock moves like this, and then it suddenly becomes like this, and then it falls. Right. So this peak should not get formed. Right. Usually. Right. Usually I'm saying unless something massive has happened in that stock. So usually avoid these type of stocks. Pick for stocks that are giving you very stable returns over time. Stable returns over time. So pick stocks that are giving you stable returns and have stable financials. OK, that's one. Second point. The company should be an industry leader. Industry leader. Right. So these are the two criteria that I look for when I'm making individual stock picks for long term investing. Now, what do I mean by industry leader? For example, if I ask you that, hey, which is the biggest bank in India or which is the best bank in India? Now, please don't say SBI. Please don't comment SBI on the comment section. So SBI joke, if you like it, please press the like button. But you would say hopefully that it is HDFC bank. Okay, so HDFC bank has been very stable. So I'll invest in a stock like HDFC. I'll invest in an industry leader like Hindustan Unilever. So identifying these industry leader is very easy, right? That's not a problem. But is that company giving stable returns over time? So how do we check it? We literally go to the balance sheet and we try to check it. So if we take a look at its income statement, we will see that the total revenues have been growing. The profit before tax or net income has also been rising. So this is this looks fairly stable, right? So what I'm going to do is that this becomes my target, right? That hey, this is a good company. It has generated stable returns. It is an industry leader. So whenever any type of dip happens in this stock, so I will buy it and I will add it to my long term portfolio. So this is a very simple approach, simple strategy that I use, right? I use the same strategy to invest a lot of money when the pandemic hit and the HUL stock went down. I bought a ton of it, but I'm literally selling it on rise from my 
from my please comment from my trading account not my long term account so i hope this point is clear and insightful if you like it please support the video by pressing the like button that will make me very happy all right now in summary if you are taking long term bets on individual stocks it's a very risky proposition so your goal as an investor should be risk minimization so only play in the long term in stocks that have given stable returns that is my simple advice to you moving on to the next point that if you say that hey akshat you know what this looks very complicated i can just identify two three stocks i don't know i don't have time to sit and analyze all the portfolio look at where company revenues are growing and the net profits are increasing i don't have all that time in the world right so what should i do so in that scenario you move to basket of investments right basket investments right now here you have two options here you can number one go with small case right and you can go with mutual funds so let me discuss both so now the good thing about small case is that they allow you to make trend based or theme based investments there is an entire video that i did where i discussed the fundamental differences between small cases and mutual funds so i'll link it here please watch it i'll not repeat the concepts here again but very very quickly just in case you don't miss it small case promotes something called as trend based or theme based investments now if you are a general reader of financial news you will be able to easily ascertain which sectors of the economy are growing and are likely to grow for example if i ask you to comment which three sectors in india will grow in the next 10 years Now please type out your answer in the comment. I will also hide my answer somewhere, but I'll check all the answers that you are giving, right? So many of you might say banking, right? Because India has been poorly banked in the past and now the banking sector is growing. That is one of the key industries in which even I am also betting and you can check my video on Equitas Holdings and very quick note there that Equitas Holding actually owns Equitas Small Finance Bank. Therefore I own Equitas Holding not Equitas Small Finance Bank because if I'm holding Equitas Holding then it already holds Equitas Small Finance Bank. I use the word hold too many times anyways back to the topic so if as an investor you are okay making theme based decisions then small case investing is for you so you can literally make a bet that okay hey akshat you know what i see that banking sector i believe like you that banking sector is going to grow quite a lot in the next few years so you can go on the small case check stocks and weights then now you will see that this small case comprises of a bunch of banks right so you can go and buy this small case so you press this invest now button and that's that you have made a buying decision on a theme which is banking right and why have you made this decision because you believe that in the next 10 15 20 years the banking sector industry will go up right so kindly do your own due diligence that what type of investments you are okay making if you have the time to do stock research and individually invest your money in stable companies go do it no problem otherwise if you just simply want to make theme based investments go invest via small cases it should be good now next option within basket investments is that you can go and buy mutual funds now mutual funds again is a wonderful route nothing against mutual funds the only issue is that please don't look at the past returns just to make future investments right for example if your mutual fund manager or if a mutual fund agent comes to you and they say that hey akshat this mutual fund has given 20% return in the past buy it no please don't do it because past historic returns do not indicate what is going to happen with that mutual fund in the future right so in mutual funds also you can make sector based decisions here for example if you are interested in buying the real estate sector right then you can go and invest in a real estate focused mutual fund right there must be many the only problem that i personally feel is that there are just too many choices when it comes to mutual fund so it gets hard to pick mutual funds right so that's one of the key disadvantages that i see for rest of the points please refer to this video so i have made a detailed analysis of mutual funds versus small case so please watch the video here now the third way in which you can invest in the long term is that you can buy index funds index funds now index funds is nothing that you can buy nifty 50 stocks or you can buy or you can invest in sensex so you are essentially buying the market right so market is what market is literally nifty 50 collection of top 50 stocks or sensex so essentially you are buying units of that market right for example if you are buying let's say 10 units of nifty 50 it means that you have invested an equal amount of money in all the existing stocks that make up nifty 50 so this is called as index investing it is very good yet it is very bad so let me explain you the concept behind it so see if you are doing sips in nifty 50 passive funds then it is a great bet right it is great and you should do it 
I myself will be doing the same. Now, why does SIP work in Nifty 50? The reason is very simple that on an average, the market is going up, right? So you can see this trend line that the market has generally gone up. Yes, there have been periods of dips, right? The market fell here, it fell here, it fell here. But generally, the market has been going up for the last several years. And the assumption is that the market will continue to go up for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. So index investing is safe and it is wonderful from that perspective. So what is the problem with index investing? The problem with index investing is that it is very bad to do swing trading or swing trades on Nifty 50 50 50 or any index fund for that matter now why am i saying that hey this is a problem now what happens is that usually our thought process is that hey if i have put like let's say one lakh rupees right and when it grows so let's say that you put your money here and it grew to let's say that you put one lakh rupee here and it became two lakh now you would be tempted to sell everything off right so now you sold everything here now you're sitting with a pile of cash of two lakh right in your bank account now what do you do with this two lakh if you're not doing anything else with that you will say that except i'll enjoy life and i'll go and travel abroad yes kudos brilliant but that again you're not systematically investing so you have something called as reinvestment risk why because you are sitting here you have just sold your stock if the market continues to go up you will never come back in the market so that becomes a problem for you now second problem is that when market falls so when market fell here in march of 2020 a lot of people panicked and they stop doing their mutual fund investments, right? So that becomes a problem that panic selling also happens. Now it's very easy for me to tell on the video that when market falls, don't sell your stocks, but you will start fretting, right? When you see the market falling from, let's say 12,000 to 10,000, you will start fretting, hey, 20% loss. Then from 10,000 to 8,000, oh my God, 40% loss. Then it falls to 7,000, almost 50% loss. Then you will panic that, hey, everything is going to go bonkers. So let me sell everything and get out. This is called as panic selling. Everyone knows about it. Still, even ace investors undertake panic selling right so this happens and it creates problem right another problem is that when you sell this index at approximately let's say 7500 8000 levels i still know friends and people who are still waiting for the market to come down to 8000 levels and it's not happening right it probably will not even happen now the problem is and there is a very interesting quote which goes something like this that people lose more money just waiting for corrections so this is exactly what is happening now that the market is making an all time high and people are just sitting that you know what I don't know what to do with my money. I'll just hold it in my bank account. But in bank account inflation is eating your money. Right. And now you're too scared to come back to the market because many of you sold your investments at 8000 9000 levels and you're just waiting that hey one day market will come back to 16,000 and same people when the market goes to 20,000 they will then make investments. This is a very important point to understand that the way to invest in index fund is through SIPs, right? You must do SIPs in index fund and let it go, right? Make monthly investments, done. Whatever date you have picked, pick an odd date, pick like 14th of the month or pick 13th of the month because majority of the people would not be making investment on 13th. Invest your money and be good with it because in the long term, the Nifty will go up and you are investing this money for two decades, right? Just assume that if you are doing index investing from that angle, then you are on the right track. So this brings me to the final part of the video that, hey, Akshat, how are you investing your 50 lakhs in the market now? So very easy. So I have divided this 50 lakh into three buckets. Number one, I'm going to buy value stocks, value or fundamentally sound stocks. These are stocks like HUL. If they fall, I'll buy it. I'll reserve some money for that. Right, HDFC Bank. I have already spoken about that. I'm buying HDFC Bank and other banking company stocks. I will also create an aggressive portfolio here. Right, I would not advocate you to do it. I'm doing it because my amount is large and I am a somewhat of an aggressive investor. So I'll put some money here. So I'll allocate approximately like 30 lakhs here. Number two, I'm going to invest like 15 lakhs in index funds over the next six months. So I'm going to do an SIP of two, two and a half lakhs per month going forward for the next six months because I generally see the market going up and three, I'm going to buy some small cases, right? I generally do not invest in mutual funds because it does not give me the control. So therefore, I'll invest the remainder of the amounts in small cases by picking up thematic investments, right? So I hope you liked the video and you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please give it a comment. That would mean a lot to me and I will see you the next time.